Hey everyone, it's Raf here from BNC Camera. If you're looking to showcase the beauty of the insect kingdom, you've come to the right video, as we'll be discussing the macro realm of shooting insects. The insect kingdom is broad and vast. Did you know that there are roughly over 900,000 species in total? That's plenty of modeling potential right there. And those models may be beautiful, while others may be a bit spooky and scary for some. But there's a beauty with that as well too. So let's jump right in first with general settings. Hit on some pointers on what you'll need and some recommended shooting techniques to help capture your interesting insectoid of choice. First up, try sticking with the shallow depth of field, somewhere around f2.8 or so. Try utilizing a fast shutter speed. Start with around 1 250th of a second. Set your camera to burst mode. You wouldn't want to miss a shot of your little friends starting their stuff. Use an ISO at around 100. Set your white balance to auto. And if you shoot in RAW, you can always change this in post-production. Okay, so let's discuss the gear you need. There are a few things that are necessary when capturing insects. Ensure you have a good camera, of course, a reliable macro lens, a durable tripod, and a reflector. A macro lens is dedicated to getting clear images of something tiny or close up. A tripod guarantees zero camera shake, and a reflector will help you reflect light when you need it. Although a dedicated macro lens is your best bet, you might not have the funds to purchase a new lens. Don't worry, you have other options. You can purchase extension tube attachments that will get you closer to your subject. These tubes go onto your lens and act as a macro lens would. These tubes are best used with a 50mm lens. Your last option would be to buy a magnifying filter. However, the image quality won't be as good as a macro lens or an extension tube. Insect photography isn't for the faint of heart depending on what little critter you're trying to capture. You gotta make sure not to get bugged out yourself. Get up close and within respectable range of your model. Now using a macro lens will help to see the detail that the naked eye won't necessarily see. This lens should have a focal length of around 50mm to 200mm to get as close as possible. Just be careful when getting up close, and try to keep as quiet as possible so you don't spook your minuscule model. Of course it'll be a lot easier if you have it within a container, but most likely you'll want to capture your subject out in the wild in all of its glory, which will prove to be a bit more challenging. Once you're up close and personal and within respectable range, focus on your bug. The shallow depth of field we had mentioned earlier will create a gorgeous depth of field separation and blur out the background to help bring your specimen of choice in focus. If you're out shooting in the wild, you are already out there. So do what you can to literally think outside the box when it comes to your shooting techniques. Try to get creative and use unique perspectives. It's silly to say, but different perspectives can help bring the drama and create more eye-catching photographs. If you can, try taking photos at every angle to have a variety of options. Also, try and get creative with your backgrounds too. Try to get the insect on something that will stand out instead of camouflaging it and making it blend with the background. A bright flower, the contrast from a patio, or even one hanging out on a blade of grass if it's a different color to the blade are but a few examples that you can use. Now it goes without saying that most bugs move quickly with all of their legs or wings. This can prove to be difficult when trying to stay focused on your subject, especially when using a macro lens. This is why using a tripod is extremely important. You want to minimize that motion blur as much as possible with a small aperture. Also try a shutter release cable to eliminate the slight movement from clicking the shutter. Something else to think about is whether to use manual or autofocus. Autofocus is excellent to help you focus quickly without fiddling, and the only downside is that it might take some time for your camera to find the insect. Manual focus is great on the other hand because it will give you absolute control over the photo's clarity. Just a little something to consider. Now one of the toughest things for those shooting in the macro world is photographing movement. Say for example you're photographing flying insects. That is just throwing in another element for you to consider. To capture your flying little friend, try using a fast shutter speed. Again, you can start off with a shutter speed of around 1 250th of a second or higher. If you catch them in action, you'll add more allure and interest to your photograph. It also goes without saying, in the world of photography, that you're going to need some proper lighting. A ring flash is an awesome little flash that can attach to your lens. This light helps create even lighting without any shadows, and this will work great for small subjects to draw out their details without the unappealing look of shadows. Insects, sometimes creepy, sometimes magnificent, and sometimes both. They can be fascinating subjects to photograph. They come in so many colors, shapes, and sizes that you'll always find something unique and something that'll offer a great perspective into their little insect realm. Alrighty, my would-be intrepid entomologist. That's a wrap for this video. So get out there and start snapping away at your favorite cute or fierce little critter. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable, helpful, and enlightening. And as always, if you did, be sure to give us a like Share to all your buddies that go bug eyes for bug photos, and subscribe to our channel as well too, as we'll be discussing more cool and interesting tips in the world of photo, video, and audio. Once again, this is Raf from BNC Camera, and we'll catch you on the next video.